चक्षुरमृतम येन तस्म श्री गुरव नम गुरव गौरचंद्रा राधिकाय सदाल कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तदभक्ताय नमो नम अजानुलंबित भुज कनक वात संकर्तनेक पितृ कमलाय तक्ष विषम बरो दुजबरो युग धर्म पालो वंदे जगत प्रिय करो करुणावतारो महाबोधे स्थिरे कनक रुचिर नील शिखरे वसन प्रसदात सहज बल बद्रेन बलिना सुभद्रा मध्यस्थ सकल सुर सेवा वसरदो जगन्नाथ स्वामी नयन पतगामी भवतुमे जगन्नाथ स्वामी नयन पतगामी भवतुमे हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत पते गोपेश गोपीकांत राधा कांत नमोस्वते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय भक्तिया विहीनाय अपराध लक्ष्य क्षिप्त कामितरंग मध्ये कृपामयी तम शरण प्रपन्न वृंदे नमस्ते शरणारविंद श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवा सदी गौरभक्तवृंद हलो हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 वन मोर टाइम लाउड हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 माई हम्बल ओबेसियंस इज एट द डिवाइन लोटस फीट ऑफ माई गुरु महाराज नितिला पुष्ण ओम विष्णु पार स्त्रोत्र श्री श्रीमान भक्ति प्रमोद पुरी गोस्वामी महाराज सिमिलरली टू माई शिक्षा गुरुदेव नितिला पुष्ण ओम विष्णुपाद भक्ति वेदांत शिला नारायण गोस्वामी महाराज एंड नितिला पुष्ण ओम विष्णुपाद भक्ति विज्ञान शिला भारती गोस्वामी महाराज सिमिलर दंडवत पर नाम स्टू नितला पुष्प भक्ति वेदांत शिला वामन गोस्वामी महाराज नितला पुष्प भक्ति वेदांत विक्रम गोस्वामी महाराज एंड शिला गौर गोविंद गोस्वामी महाराज my inerval dandvat pranams to founder of gaudiya mat shila bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur prabhupad and all his prominent associates shishma bhakti pragyan keshav gosai maharaj shishma bhakti raksha shridhar gosai maharaj shila bhakti dait madhav gosai maharaj and one who delivered eastern and western world with krishna bhakti Nitila Vishnu Vishnu Pad Bhakti Vidhan Swami Maharaj Shri Prabhu Pad to all associates of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and to Shri Shri Radha Madhav to all assembled devotees here my heartly welcome to all of you and feeling gratitude <coughs> you all came to spend some time encouraging inspiring me to speak something and in this way we all spending this few minutes some hours remembering the lord which is the only means to evoke all auspiciousness in our life <clears throat> otherwise ayur harti va pumsam bhagavatam first can to describe sunrise and sunset taking away our life which day of our life going to be the last day 
it's not guaranteed it's, there's no surety we don't know we're going to see sunrise tomorrow or not there's the uncertainty of the life therefore this life is very temporary in nature but we have a very golden opportunity and not to waste the most precious gift given by Lord to us and the most precious gift given by Lord is not a penthouse at Gold Coast but the most ah, precious gift is this human birth which is not easily accessible for many jivas, many souls. There are uh, 8.5 million species of life. Jalaja Navalakshani. 900,000 varieties of aquatics. Sthavar Laksha Bhimshati. 2 million uh, varieties of animals. Pakshinam Das Lakshanam. 1 million varieties of birds. So there are so many species of life, insects, reptiles, snakes, four-legged animals, and then comes human being. The best creation of the Lord, human being. God created man out of his own image. That's also the image of the God, Krishna, the Supreme Personality, who is also known as Purushottam. And we are in this month, the most auspicious month, Purushottam month. The month of Krishna, the additional month, which is, we can't calculate according to the solar calendar. We have Jan, Feb, March, April, all these months. This calculation is done according to the solar calendar. But from the Vedic perspective, we also consider the lunar calendar according to the movement of the moon along with the movement of the sun. <clears throat> the movement of the moon goes around and completes its orbit and completion comes in 354 days in one year, which is known as one year. And the movement of sun is 300, 365 days, which we all know. But there is a gap between moon and sun, 11 days gap in one year, which is not counted in English calendar. <clears throat> but there is a gap of 11 days. We have to fill in that gap. And then the other falling next year, the following year is again a gap of 11 days, so 22. And then after two years and some months, it completes to 30, means a month, additional month, which is known as Adik Mas and the Parshottam month. And this is what going on now. Parshottam month, in which uh, we also, we only know about one sun, but they are, Twelve sons, Dwadash Aditya. Every month has his own sun and moon. But what about this additional month, Purshottam month? <clears throat> we have only twelve sons. From where the thirteenth son is going to come? The thirteenth son is Krishna Himself. So in this month, if we seeing sun. Hmm. Sun is Krishna. <laughs> the wind is Krishna. The moon is Krishna. This month is Krishna's month. <clears throat> and therefore, he is addressed as Purushottam, the best amongst all the Purushas. Purushas means not only the male. Purusha means the best amongst all the avatars. All the incarnations of the Lord. There are three Purushas. Purushu Sutri Rupani Purushakhe Atham Vidhum. Ekam to Mahatashishtam 
दुत्यतम अंडस्थितम तृतीय सरभूता ज्ञानी आत्म विमोचते थ्री फेमस विष्णु वन इज कारण दक्षा विष्णु हु इज द विटनेस ऑफ सो मेनी यूनिवर्सेस नॉट जस्ट वन यूनिवर्स ही इज अंतरयामी ही इज द विटनेस ऑफ एक्टिविटीज इन ऑल द यूनिवर्सेस बट देन देर इज अंदर विष्णु कॉल गर्व दक्षा विष्णु एंड ही इज विटनेस ऑफ वन कंप्लीट यूनिवर्स गर्भदक्षाई विष्णु then he further expand himself as shiro daksha vishnu and is present in everyone's heart everyone's heart as parmatma witness of individual individual witness what our activities are uh, completely known by parmatma shiro daksha vishnu these are three purushas but these three purushas are known known as purushottam because these three purushas expand from sankarshan which further got expanded from shibaladev prabhu and baladev prabhu got expand from krishna therefore hence krishna is purushottam the best amongst all the purushas today we are in this house param prabhu in short we all say param right <laughs> who is param param purushe what is that shlok param purushe bhakti yogena manasi samyak pratapya male apashchat purusham purnam maya sad para ashrayam Shri Vyasadev, in his samadhi, after got instructed by his Guru Dev Narad, he saw Krishna, who is Param Purusha, means the best amongst all the Purusha, best amongst all the Purusha. And what else he saw? The Maya, the external energy of the Lord behind Krishna. In other words, he saw the complete scene. the all pastimes of krishna and the external energy of krishna behind him so param krishna is param krishna so dham upagatate dharma gyana divi sah kalo nashram drishtam visham puran arkhodam what is that verse the first verse of shrimad bhagavatam describe param what is that first verse complete very nice satyam param dhimahi <clears throat> the word dhimahi means to meditate on meditate on what we chant this word dhimahi every day right when we chant our gayatri what is dhimahi means dhimahi to meditate on meditate on what Shila Bhakti Raksha Shridhar Goswami Mara described to meditate on the service mood, not meditating on any artificial form, but meditating on Anu Kule Na Krishna Nu Shila Nam. Those activities which are favorable to please Krishna, and giving up all other activities which are unfavorable towards Krishna. This is what need meditation on. We need to meditate on satyam param dhimahi to param satte. Today class is param. Param satte, the all truth, the ultimate truth. Is that applies to any personality? Not at all. Are jiva satte? 
the truth or not yes yes or no jeevas are satya we all we are souls in part and parcel of krishna in bhagavad gita krishna says mame vanshu jeeva loke jeeva bhut sanatan all the jeevas are my part and parcel as krishna is eternal the jeevas are also eternal is satya but not param satya jeeva is satya the truth but not param not ultimate truth because jeeva cannot create creation cannot be done by jeevas can liberated jeeves jeevas can create conditioned souls cannot create we can't even create any anything from the nature we can't create one bird we can't create one flower so creation cannot be done by conditioned soul but can creation be done by liberated souls shilabakyo thakur in jaya dharma describe not at all cannot be done otherwise there will be a fault what that fault bahu ishwarvan because creation can only be done by god by the lord and if jeeva start doing creation then there will be so many ishwars there so many gods which cannot be possible there is only one and who is that one ekla ishwar krishna ar sab ritya only one krishna one ishwar one lord whose name is krishna and all others are his servants kyo mane na mane sakal tar das if if someone believes or don't believe but everyone is a servant of krishna even the incarnations of the krishna are submissive to krishna and they serve krishna how incarnations are serving krishna when krishna is killing demons in vraj putna agasur vakasur vyomasur keshi and all that krishna is not killing them then who's killing them krishna is just touching them just playing with them but chetana cheta me describe vishnu dwara krishna kore asur sahar the vishnu which is present in krishna hmm. vishnu is killing all the demons krishna is not killing that's not his work so vishnu is killing all these demons serving krishna to make him enjoy his past times to make enjoyment to the associates of krishna to participate in those past times so coming of all these demons sent by kamsa and arranged by the leela shakti of krishna is to enhance that taste in enjoying his past times because when these demons comes they are acting as catalyst we say they acting as a obstruction and obstructions are very important in bhakti also and in the past times also any incident any accident happens in the life of a sincere sadhaka there's obstruction that inspires a sadhaka to lament and repent for that incident and accident and because of that lamentation and because of the repentance mood he or she cries and weep in calling out krishna to excuse the offenses that cry of that sadhak is immediately embraced by krishna that the sadhak is crying for me that's the nature of that param purusha krishna even though i am crying for my own actions with a repentance mood but krishna's nature is he takes the essence and he acknowledge or oh, he is crying uttering and calling out me 
is calling for me and is crying for me. Immediately Krishna embraced that cry of that sadhak. And sometimes obstructions are given by Krishna himself. With us, I don't think so is possible. But with his associates and his pure devotees, he himself created those obstructions. Because he loves to see everyone crying for him. He loves to see that. Amazing, huh? We can say, oh, he's so rude. Huh? <laughs> he's making us cry. But this cry is not the cry of any uh, ordinary cry of this material world. Any cry for Krishna, any tears of Krishna is the most auspicious moment and the valuable jewels from spiritual perspective. Which is not that easy. Laughing, joking is a regular phenomena. But crying and weeping and that too for Krishna, that's not regular. That's very auspicious. And devotees, they long for that. They're longing for that. And that's why what our acharyas, they... They didn't open the centers, they opened the crying schools. <laughs> Srila Guru Govind Gosai Maharaj, right? Cry school. And very boldly, with a stick in his hand, he used to say, Cry for Krishna. You're crying for Maya. And I'm here to teach you how to cry for Krishna. Krishna loves to see if you cry. Because in that cry, yeah, one extracts spiritual bliss. That's not ordinary cry for any scarcity. The cry is there for any scarcity. But cry for Krishna is not for scarcity. It is to fill in that gap. The gap which is there. Not on the ozone gap. And they try so much. What was that? Yeah, chemtrails. To fill in that gap. No. There's so much in Australia, right? <clears throat> Everywhere, but more here. To fill in that gap. So that cry bridges the gap, the distance which we have for Krishna from time immemorial. That's why he loves to see that cry. With us, <clears throat> these obstructions, uh, which comes, and only those who are sincere sadhaka takes those obstructions as a lesson and a morale to bridge that gap, the distance between me and my Krishna. I am being the part and parcel of my Lord. I got separated from Him. <clears throat> Therefore we pray. Gauranga boli te have pula ka shari ra hari hari boli te na ya neva veli ra When the day will come in my life, all bhajans are full of uh, hankering and longing for that day. Kabe habe bolo se dina ama. Oh, when the day will come in my life. Hmm. So everyone is crying. Associates are crying. The gopis are crying. Radharani is crying. Dwarkavasis are crying. In Mathura, everyone is crying. Nanda Baba is crying. Yashoda Maya is crying. Krishna also cries. Then why don't we cry? If this is what he likes and this is what his favorite, then why don't we cry? That doesn't mean artificial imposition of start weeping for one hour practicing every day. <laughs> let's, let's try crying today. 
No, can't be possible. Tadasham saram hide vitedam yad grinam harinam dev. Only when the heart melts, only when the heart melts, then there is bona fide crying, not artificial fake crying. The heart needs to be melted. Certain temperature is needed to melt that heart because it turns to very thick and strong and certain temperature is required. Some heat is required and that heat and temperature is <clears throat> what? Association of those who are already crying. So catch hold the field of Shinottam Thakur, catch hold the feet of Shri Bhakti Thakur, Shri Lochan Thakur, who is just crying and crying and weeping. Kandiya, Kandiya, Prana, Na, Rakhu, Ko, Ar. I'm not going to live, uh, maintain my life, sustain my life. I want to give up my life, weeping and crying. To get aligned with the crying of those who are already crying. For what? Crying in bliss. Crying in love of Krishna. <clears throat> Therefore, Satyam Param Dhimahi Jivas, living entities, they are truth, but they are not ultimate truth. Then Maya, the external energy of the Lord, is truth or false? What is evidence? What is evidence? Maya is also truth because Maya is the external energy of the Lord Himself. It's not any fake creation. Krishna Himself created that Maya. He Himself created Trigunatmak Maya. And this is called science, not only knowledge, realization of knowledge. Because Krishna, who is Param, he imparted this knowledge in the heart of Brahma, infused this knowledge, or we can say gave this knowledge to the creator Brahma. Rite artam yat pratetna pratecha atmani tad vidde atma maya yatha bhasa yatha tama. This Maya is also truth, but not ultimate truth. How about this universe, this creation? Is false or truth? Truth. Hmm? Parambhu? Truth. But Mayavadis, followers of Shankaracharya, they say this is Mithya. Brahm Satya Jagat Mithya. Brahm is truth, but this creation is not truth, it's false. We don't agree to them. Mm. Vaishnava philosophy describes what? No, no. Temporary, but the point is if this world is created by Lord or not. So if it is created by Lord, that means this is truth. It's not false. But Mayavadis, they claim this is false. But Vaishnava philosophy say, no, this is truth. Brahm is truth and the creation is also truth. But very detailed topic, Chatur Shloki Bhagavatam. If you read that, you'll be amazed. Commentaries by our Acharyas. The knowledge given by Krishna directly to Brahma. Yatha mahanti bhutani bhute chuchesanu parvishtani pravishtani tatha teshavna teshaham. Just like the body is made of five elements. What are five elements? Five elements. Earth, water, fire, ether. Yes. 
but they have their own existence too, right? All bodies have five elements, but it's not that five elements just <coughs> came in just one body. A portion, a fraction, a minute fraction of five elements are present in individual bodies. But they also, they do have their own existence. There's water, there's fire, there's ether, everything. Right? Krishna is saying similarly. I am present in everyone's heart as Paramatma. But I do have my own existence separate from that Paramatma being Krishna, Parampurusha, the Supreme Personality. I am my own existence. So even though I exist in everyone's heart, just like five elements are present in everybody, I also exist in everyone's heart, but as only Super Soul, as Paramatma, not as Krishna. But I, as Krishna, only situated in the heart of my pure devotees. Paramatma is not there. Krishna himself is there. And the practice, the bhajan, the practice is to invite and invoke Krishna to come and sit in the heart. Not part and parcel of Krishna Paramatma, but Krishna himself to come and sit in the heart. And when Krishna comes and sits in the heart, then Krishna boldly says, Sadhu hidi mayam, Sadhu hidim tamham. Sadhus reside in my heart and I reside in the heart of the sadhus. Man anatya tana jananti, nahum tebhyam vanagapi. I don't know anybody except my sadhus and sadhus they don't know anybody except me. And the sadhus have controlled me in their heart. The word control is negative. But here the word control is controlled by pain, by love. And therefore that Krishna who is Param Purushaha, the ultimate truth, he get controlled in the heart of his devotees. How? Ready? Karo. Kya bola mein? Huh. Aham bhakt paradhina hai asatantra dija. I am the all controllable one and I am very independent but I am dependent on my devotees. I am dependent on my devotees because they bind me with a rope in their heart. What is that rope? The rope of love. Pranena rasena ditangri padma. So jivas cannot be ultimate truth. Maya cannot be ultimate truth. The world is not ultimate truth. Is Paramatma in the heart is ultimate truth? Yes or no? How you say no? Why Paramatma is not? What's wrong? What's wrong with the Paramatma? He's only here in the material world. Huh? He's only here in the material world. He's all in the material world? How is he? He's not a manifestation in the spiritual world. No, Paramatma is a manifestation of Krishna. But he's not in the spiritual world. Of course, he is. He's a fraction. He's an extension. Tiny fraction. Krishna's Like a fire. It's not supreme, but why Paramatma is not supreme? This is my question. What is lacking? Have all the six qualities. Because Paramatma, he don't manifest any pastimes. <laughs> he is no, he's directly manifested from Krishna, but he don't have any pastimes. His only function is to witness. That's all. Hmm. Therefore, his his truth, but not ultimate truth. Yeah. Then who is ultimate truth? Bhagwan, Narayan and Vaikuntha? His Satya or not? His truth or not? But why not Param Satya? Why not ultimate truth? Because 
even though he is endowed with all opulences, but he has distance with his devotees, this lack of some sweetness there. He is full of Ashwari, but Madhuri, sweetness, means the, the gap, the distance between devotees and the Lord. And because of the distance and gap, there is no close proximity. So he is truth, but not Satyam Param. He is not Param Satya. Is Lord Ram Param Satya? No, no, no. Yes, no. Hmm? He has a relationship with his devotees, <clears throat> but that relationship is also very restricted. Huh? Yes. There is full of Maryada. Maryada matlab? Idealism. Hmm? Rules and regulations. Oh. Uh, etiquette. Mm -hmm. Principles. So that's why there is some gap. His friends cannot climb on his shoulder. And he can't climb on the shoulder of his friends. His mother, what's the mother of Ram? She can't twist the ear of the Lord Ram. She can't. That's the distance about. So therefore, there is opulence and very small little sweetness, but not complete sweetness. Therefore, Ram, Lord Ram, is truth, but again, not satyam param, not ultimate truth. Madhure Bhagavata Sar Braj Kailo Prachar Taha Shuk Vyaser Nandan Varni Ateche Janaiti Chetan Chetamit Madhure Bhagavata Sar. The essence of Bhagavata means the Lordship is present in sweetness, not in opulence. Huh. So, all these incarnations they are full of opulences, <clears throat> though there is interaction between the associates and the servants and the devotees. But attraction, uh, that interactions have some distance, not complete closeness. Whereas with Krishna, now Krishna from, not from Dwaraka, Krishna not from the Mathura, but Krishna only from Vrindavan, has so much close intimate, intimacy with his own associates. He can jump on the shoulder of his friends and allow them, not allowing them, they jump on the shoulder of Krishna. He snatch food from the mouth of his friends and they can also do the same. Madhure Bhagavata Sar Chaitanya Chaitamit Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami described. Madhure Bhagavata Sar, the sweetness of the Lord is the essence of his opulence, which is only seen in Braj, in Vrindavan, nowhere else. <coughs> to okay, keep some, I am going too much Siddhanta, philosophical point, coming to some pastime point, to <coughs> establish this. <coughs> in Dwarika, Krishna married eight prominent queens. Because this is Purushottam month, so we are hearing about Purushottam. Krishna married eight prominent queens. <clears throat> now, the prominent among all those queens, Rukmani, Satyabhama, Jamvati. Jamvati. And this happened because of one Kalankalaga, Matlab. A blame came on the head of Krishna. How come? There was a king whose name was Satyajit. He used to worship sun god. And because he used to worship sun god, sun gave him a money, a jewel, called Samantak. So, 
with so much proud pride he was wearing that on his neck and he came to the palace and all ministers and kings they saw wow looks like sun is appearing in the palace they about to stand up in honor but krishna said everyone sit down it's not sun it's just the king satyajit felt a little bad <laughs> i was getting a honor everyone stood up for me but in front of everyone krishna he requested this king can you give this jewel to me and with this jewel i'm going to serve so many brahmins and cows and take care of the society why it is so yesterday i was in gold coast so our topic was about gold so i mentioned something about krishna uh, ram i also wanted to mention this but there was less time and the course of the lecture like a breeze went to different direction so gold coast this money this jewel samantak the glories of this jewel is 60000 tola kitna hota hai 16000 tola tola is 10 grams 60000 60000 tola tola is 10 grams okay there is a denomination one tola which is called 10 grams 60000 tola this jewel creates kitne hoga 6000 kilograms gold every single day whoever possess this jewel 6000 kilograms gold every single day and krishna wanted this to serve brahmins and take care of his subjects but in front of everyone king sataji said no why have to give this to you this for my decoration krishna felt embarrassed but baldev prabhu was very angry and he chastised krishna you still childish krishna you asked this jewel from him and he said no to no to you i didn't feel good about this i really wanted to kill him there how dare he can say no to you and why you ask this baldev prabhu in anger he just left so satyajit he was sleeping and in the night time his own brother came killed him oh sorry uh, stole that jewel and went to the forest for hunting yeah and next morning the king woke up he found, hey where is my jewel gone where is my necklace gone must krishna must have stolen this from me and everyone is witness he asked this in front of all of you right they said yes so he stole a big huge blame came on the head of krishna krishna's wondering who did this let me go to the forest and find out so he found out from his spies and they said we saw his own brother was moving around hmm in the night around his room krishna got this clue and he went to the forest with taking with him some yadavas in the forest he saw his brother uh kya naam tha ha huh? prasen he saw his brother prasen dead there and saw the foot uh, print of lion footprint of lion so krishna understood the story okay maybe the lion came and killed and took that jewel krishna followed the footsteps of lion and saw lion also dead and next to the lion saw the footprints of bear krishna start following that and entered into the cave and all the yadavas they stayed back oh, oh he is going into cave why we have to go there he is bhagwan nothing going to harm him but what if there is crocodile on some other ferocious animals what's going to happen with us they stayed back only krishna entered inside 
So our Acharyas, they describe, this is a difference. The mood of Dwarika and the mood of Braj. That's the difference, a huge difference. Where the inhabitants of Dwarika, they believe Krishna is supreme. That means they are always in opulent mood, in opulent mood. They have no any trace of or the mood of Krishna having any sweetness. No one can harm Krishna. So what is the point of going inside the cave? Let him go alone. They left Krishna alone there. So our Acharyas describe the comparison between Krishna and Vrindavan and Krishna and Dwarika. The, my purpose of explaining the entire story is because of this. This important point here. When Krishna jumped into the lake, Kalia lake, and the news got spread everywhere that Krishna jumped into the river Jamuna, all came running. They also want to throw themselves in Jamuna, jump into Jamuna, because if Krishna is in water with a poisonous snake in the water, why we have to live? We also want to show our love. If Krishna is not, then why? What is the purpose of our life? And as Gopal Champu described, only houses and trees. Remember, Prabhu, we used to read this years back. Only houses and trees. They were lamenting. We don't have feet to run. Otherwise, we we also want to jump into Jamuna to show how much we love Krishna. Because nothing in spiritual world is inert or matter. They have emotions, chantras, even trees, the houses. Everyone loves Krishna. They are in chantras. So they were lamenting. But all Brajvasis, they want to jump in Jamuna to express their love. But they all they got they all got stopped by Balaram Prabhu. Shri Baldev Prabhu there. How, how Baldev Prabhu taught them? He was standing there and smiling. Come on, what is this? This is called overlapping of rasa. What was happening right now was Karun Ras. Karun Ras means? Sadness? Sadness? No. Lamenting. Lamenting. Everyone is sad and lamenting and they want to throw themselves in Jamuna because they are feeling separation from Krishna. Thinking if Krishna is in Jamuna, Hani must be in danger with that poisonous snake Kalya. So the mood of lamentation, a pathetic mood is going on there. Karunras, pathetic mood. And Balde Prabhu standing there smiling. That's called Hasiras, which is, is called Virudhabhas, against. So, mood of pathetic and mood of smiling is totally against each other. Yes? Let's say, someone very close to me, my neighbor, my friend, somebody died in their family and everyone is lamenting and a very pathetic scene is going on and I start put DJ and start dancing next door. It's weird, right? And Baldev Prabhu is standing there smiling. It's called overlapping of rasa. Why Baldev Prabhu was smiling there? To protect all Brajavasis. That Hasya Ras, which is a secondary Ras, became so prominent there to save the life of all the Brajavasis, which is contrary to the pathetic mood, the Karun Ras. There's a Siddhanta. And why Baldev Prabhu did this? To make everyone assure nothing is wrong. Don't worry. Everyone saw Baldev Prabhu smiling. They got little shanti, peace. Because if Krishna is in danger, the, the very first person <laughs> was Baldev who could have also jumped in Jamuna and saved him. If he's there on the shore, on the bank of Jamuna, and if he's smiling, that means everything is fine. 
because of a smile of Balde Prabhu going against contrary to the uh, Karun Ras is helping Krishna enjoying his pastimes. So imagine even a smile of Balde Prabhu means a lot. The chastisement of Balde Prabhu means a lot. Even wearing those outfits, the best outfit Balde Prabhu wear is blue color, right? Is also to make Krishna enjoy his pastimes. What it has to do? The clothes of Balde Prabhu. Long story, everyone knows what short. <laughs> when in Nidhuvan, Radha Krishna is sleeping together, in the morning, the Kakhati comes, the she monkey, and she starts screaming, Jatila, Jatila. Radharani goes back to her in laws in Javat, and Krishna goes back to Nandagaon. And the Jatila, mother in law of Krishna, Radharani, she comes and sees, What I am seeing? Radha, she is supposed to have blue color shawl. But I am seeing this yellow. That belongs to Krishna. Something is wrong. And the Sakhis are saying, No, Jatila, this is blue color. You have color blindness. <laughs> they got engaged, Jatila, in some talks and immediately they took that blue one and put uh, the yellow one and put the blue one. Jatila saw, oh, oh yes, maybe I'm getting old. Something is wrong. But what's happening in Nandagao? Yashoda Maya came to wake Krishna and she saw what? Krishna is having this blue color shawl. Where is his pitambar? Yellow. Then the Sakha said, Oh Maya, Yashoda Maya, because Krishna plays with Balram all day and night. So sometimes they get exchanged with <laughs> shawls. Hmm. So even everything of Balde Prabhu is to manifest. Uh, sorry, is to make Krishna enjoy his pastimes. So, even his smile, when everyone is about to die, is to uh, make Krishna enjoy dancing on the hoods of the snake Kaliya. So, this is a very important point. Krishna in Dwarika is truth, is satya. But Krishna in Vrindavan is Param Satya, the ultimate truth. Param Satya, Param Satyam Dhimahi. In Dwarka, the residents, they have opulent mood. We don't want to go into the cave. Because Krishna is self-sufficient, he can do whatever he wants. But here in Braj, in Vrindavan, everyone wants to jump into Jamuna, to give up their life for Krishna. This is called sweetness, Madhuri. More love is there, more intimacy is there. Finally, when Krishna entered in the cave, he saw a bear, Jamvan, the associate of Ram. And Jamvan started fighting with Krishna. 27 days, Jamvan keep on hitting him. And Krishna just protecting himself, he's not hitting back to Jamvan. After 27 days, Jaman is thinking, who is this personality? In one punch, I even throw Ravan on the ground with one punch. And who is he who is tolerating 27 days all my punches? Is he my Prabhu, Ram? Jaman said, are you my Prabhu, Ram? Krishna smiled and said, no, I am not Ram, but I'm, of course I am Sham. <laughs> and then Jaman Tears in his eyes, with folded hands, ask forgiveness. I'm so sorry, Prabhu. I was I'm not able to recognize you. I'm so sorry. Krishna said, Don't worry, I'm just here for one samantak money, a jewel. Bear said, Yes. Jaman said, I took this money, I killed that lion, I brought this in my cave, and I handed over to my daughter Jamvati. So Jaman took inside and Jamvati. This is in Lalit Madhav. Jamvati is putting this Samantak money 
the neck of Krishna. And his father Jamvan addressed, Oh Jamvati, and she turned back and she saw Krishna. Surprisingly, she is in love with Krishna, she never told anyone. But today this has been seen by his father, that my daughter is in love with Krishna and Krishna is just there. And Jamvan said, Prabhu, this is your money, this is your jewel. But because I offended you by hitting you so many times, please forgive me and also accept my daughter's hands and marry my daughter Jamvati. Krishna brought Jamvati back to palace in Dwarka and threw this jewel in front of the king Satyajit. Here's your jewel. You blamed me. It's your own brother who takes this jewel from you. And he's, he's been killed in the forest. Satyajit felt so embarrassed. He said, no, 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 Prabhu, you just keep this jewel. I don't want. No, take this. I don't want. He, th he thought, this is going to be a big issue, not having good relationship with Krishna. I'll be getting weak otherwise. So I should also follow the standard what Jamvan has did. Because he has one daughter called Satyabhama. <laughs> so please accept this jewel. Krishna said, I don't want. Take, I don't want this. Okay, then please accept my daughter's hands in your hands. I have a beautiful daughter, Satyabhama. So as Jamvan did, I also want to do the same thing. My daughter loves you so much. And Krishna got married with Satyabhama. In this way, eight prominent queens, eight prominent queens in Dwaraka. But that was not my purpose of speaking this. The purpose to describe who is Param Satya. Bhagavatam describes Satyam Param Dhimahi, the very first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. And that applies to Krishna of Braj, Vrindavan. Huh? Meditating on that Krishna, who is Param Satya. But, Meditating alone on Krishna is not complete. Srila Bhakti Thakur described Keval Madha Pujeso Agyani. One who worship Krishna alone without Radharani. Radharani means the best Kishori of Braj, Braj Kishori. <laughs> huh. If you don't worship Radharani along with Krishna, it's incomplete. This is very funny. If we don't, if we don't worship Krishna with Radharani, is an incomplete. But if we only worship Radharani, even without Krishna, is complete. Yes. <laughs> what is the proof? What is the evidence? Sri Raghunath Das Goswami. Sri Raghunath Das Goswami said, If Krishna in Dwarika calls me, come Raghunath and have my darshan if you are having separation from me. Raghunath Das Goswami said, I don't want to go to Dwarika to have your darshan. But if my Radharani calls me, come Raghunath and have my darshan, I will fly more, uh, more fast, more speedy than Garuda to have darshan of my Radharani. Therefore, Dasya Stumam, Rasastu, Rasastu, Satyam. Hmm. So, only worshipping Radharani, that is complete worship, because Gaudiya Vaishnava believes Krishna is always there where Radharani is present. All activities of Krishna, all intent of Krishna, everything, Anvya Vyatirek, direct and indirect, is only to meant to please Radharani. The whole past time descending from Golok to here on this planet is what? What is the purpose? Just one purpose. Amongst primary and secondary, only to please and glorify my Radharani. That's the only purpose of Krishna. Which Krishna? Who is Param Sakti. Only to glorify my Radha, to show to everyone what is the glories of my Radha. And Krishna was not satisfied 
being as Krishna in Dwarka, so he has to come again in Kali Yuga as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu <coughs> to describe this. Jadi Gauranga na haito, tabe ki haito, ke man dharitam de. Radhara Mahima Prema Rasasima Jagato Janato Ke. If Mahaprabhu would have not come, how the glories of Radharani would have been manifested, spread it. Mahaprabhu came to glorify, to show this, that the glories of Radharani, what Krishna goes through when he embraces the mood and complexion of Radharani, what Krishna goes through, here you see, calling out, Krishna, Krishna, crying and rolling on the ground and weeping, laughing like a mad person. The glories of Radharani has been expressed. So, only worshipping Param will not going to work. Braj Kishori has to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Radharani has to be there. <laughs> and if Radharani is there, then Krishna is already there. Yeah? Krishna is already there. Where we can see Krishna? Massaging the feet of Radharani. That Parabrahm who is worshipped by, whose feet is worshipped by Brahma, Shiva, Irad Koti Yadapada Pitaha. That Krishna is seen at Seva Kunj, massaging the feet of Radharani, decorating the hairs of Radharani. Where? Shingarvat. That Parabrahm is been seen there. Amazing. This pastimes is the uh, sampatti, yeah? is a treasure of Gaudiya Vaishnavas. This scene is a treasure of Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Krishna being massaging as Anukula Nayak, massaging the lotus feet of uh, Radharani, Mahabhav Sarupani Radharani. That's why we are Gaudiyas. Gaudiya means devotees of Radharani. The devotees of Vishnu is Vaishnavas. Devotees of Krishna is Kashnias. The devotees of Radha is Gaudiyas. So we are following, we are trying to follow <coughs> this lineage, the most glorious hmm. Gaudiya line. Prominence of Radharani over Krishna. And on the top of that, Ending up here saying, <clears throat> Krishna's separation for Radharani is like a poison that goes to the head of Krishna. So he needs some shanti, some peace, some solace. So what he wants? Nectar on his head. The poison has raised to my head, O oh Radhe. So place your lotus feet on my head. I bow down to you. Smaragal khandanam, mam shirasi mandanam, dehi pad pallavudaram. Place your lotus feet on my head, because your lotus feet is nectar. And poison has raised to my head. Place your lotus feet on my head. Ah, to destroy, to remove that poison effect of separation and give me opportunity to serve you, hmm. to have proximity with you. Because of what? Because of the mood of male and female. It's not about male and female there. Don't try to misunderstand this. It's all about Krishna is acknowledging and understanding. Or we can say he is trying to understand the glories of the Prem of Radharani, which is so high. She is so absorbed day and night, 24 hours, only with one mood in her head, to serve Krishna. To serve Krishna. Every activities of Radharani, Every activity of Radharani is just to serve Krishna. 
Krishna feel obliged. If I don't repay, I'll be ungrateful. Ungrateful. <clears throat> Hence, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he brought this mood. And there's the best gift, a golden gift given to us. The jivas of this iron age, Kali Yuga, who have no interest in spirituality, whose only interest is enjoying. The jivas of Kali Yuga, no interest in renunciation, just enjoying. So Mahaprabhu brought this great gift. Enjoy this gift now. Enjoy this chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamantra. But Mahaprabhu, when I take beads in my hand, that's not called enjoyment. That's like meditation. Mahaprabhu said then, everyone just stand up and perform Sankirtan. There's so much enjoyment in Sankirtan. Mahaprabhu used to dance with all his associates. Where? In the streets of Navdi. Udilo Aruna Pura Babhagi Dujamani Gauraya Mani Jage Bhakata Samuha Laiya Sathe Gela Nagara Braje Mahaprabhu with all his associates chanting the names of Krishna Mukunda Madhava Yadava Hari Bolore Bolore Vadana Bhori Biche Nidra Vese Gelo Jerati Divasa Sari Rasaji Don't waste your life in sleeping and enjoying in night and decorating your bodies, maintaining your bodies in the daytime. Hmm. Worship Krishna, Bhajo Krishna. Hmm. Worship Krishna and make your life the most successful life. That's a great gift given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. With his own associates, he came to us and gave this gift to us. Like, you know, randomly any person knock your door on Christmas and say, Hey, happy Christmas and this is a gift to you. But I don't know you. Doesn't matter, but this is gift for you. And happily I'm going to accept that gift because it's a very precious. It's worth like $10,000. Who's going to reject that? Yes? Whoever sent this, I don't know. But I'm going to use this. It's worth $10,000. It's written. Similarly. Someone came in our life. We even didn't knew their glories and not even their names. But they knocked the door of our heart. Here's a gift for you. For Christmas? No, for God Purnim. <laughs> the birth of Mahaprabhu. <laughs> He's giving, he wants to give you this gift and he sent me hmm, to deliver this gift to you. And it worth not $10,000. It worth how much? Unlimited, Unlimited dollars. Huh. But I don't know you. Doesn't matter. But you open this gift, you'll see everything in there. Let me open this gift. <clears throat> they opened this gift and there was some aroma entered in the nostril. And just by that aroma entered in the nostril, transformation. From hippie turns to happy. <laughs> that the aroma of that gift. <laughs> One who was intoxicated before and wasting life enjoying. Today's chanting in the streets, everywhere around the world, getting intoxicated and maddened in that, with the aroma of that gift. Chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. And by chanting this, getting what? Param Gati. Param Gati means the highest destination. By serving Satyam Param. Who is Param Satya? All truth Krishna. To get the high destination. 
but cannot be alone krishna cannot be alone therefore devi krishna mai prokta radhika par devata with radha rani par devata also ultimate to worship divine couple ultimate couple to get the ultimate destination with the ultimate means and that is chanting hare krishna mahamantra Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Vancha kalkaru vyasya kripa sindhu vevacha patita nam pavne bhyo shishi gaur nitanan prabhu ki jai shila guru dev ki jai acharya vrind ki jai nitai gaur primanande Thank you Param Prabhu and Braj Kishwari Mataji. Hare Krishna. After four years, I can't imagine because covid came no? some obstruction was there that is enhancing separation put <laughs> a long time devotees please come to kartik parikrama and it's very inspiring kartik parikrama happens uh, starting from October 27 October 28 October to 26 November in India it's a wonderful month very auspicious month and you can say recharge to our bhakti so please come and attend the parikrama singing and dancing a retreat actually a one month retreat a spiritual retreat under guidance of Srila Gurudev and so many Vaishnavas please try to come for as many days as you can. Yes, Didi? I'm afraid to say this, but your talk was so beautiful about the sweetness of the Paramahansa. And it reminded me of something that I heard from my Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Ranchakshri Maharaj, many decades ago. He told the story of. Um, that he used to travel with his Guru Dev Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And one and in those days of course there was no um, recording devices. And um, they went to a house program. And at that house program uh Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati began to speak. And the topic that he was speaking on was so so deep and so beautiful. And my Guru Maharaj, he would usually take notes so that the um, lecture would be able to be published. But that night, he didn't have a paper and he didn't have a pen. And the whole lecture, he was, he was like hearing it and he was like in so much anxiety to find a pen that he couldn't catch the full lecture and he also couldn't get the pen. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, at nighttime, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta said to him, Bring your notes, bring your notes. I don't know what came through me today, but I, I also have need to hear again what I said. And uh, he was speaking on the verse of Bhagavatam Satyagratam Satyaparam Tri Satyam. And uh, when I heard that, I was always wondering, like, Wow, I wonder what Srila Bhakti Siddhartha Prabhupada said in that lecture. And uh, hearing your lecture today, it just gave me a feeling of some of the sweetness that mm -hmm. must have been. Srila so Prabhupada used to describe this verse, one word of this verse for one month. Satyam Parandhimahi. One month. Not just one hour, hours and hours. Just on one word. This this verse contains all Gaudiya philosophy. And each and every word, I'm not scholar, but those who are scholars, they can elaborate this for like year. <laughs> every single word. Janma Dasya. Just this one word. Anvaya Itirish Dharthishu Abhigya Swarat. Each and every word contains so deep philosophy. Each and every word. 
but we also have to be very um, expert in uh, reception, <laughs> understanding if Bhakti Siddhan Sosri Thakur Prabhupada is speaking because his words used to be so calculative and not even ordinary words. I was reading the commentaries <clears throat> on Srimad Bhagavatam. So I read what Sridhar Swamipath said. I read what Srinivas Acharya Prabhu saying. I read what Jeev Goswami saying. But then in the last Sridhar Prabhupada, so he took from every Acharya plus his own commentary. And it was when I was reading this on the flight four, four days back. It's amazing. Like language from different world. Not even ordinary words. The words he used to describe, how, how he used to describe the lectures is not even ordinary words. It's very complicated and very sophisticated words he used to use in his for description describing ordinary words is only just for us to understand whereas with ordinary words you can't describe the glories of the spiritual world so Sri Prabhupada was like this so imagine Shri Bhakti Raksha Sri Goswami Maharaj and many other Acharyas who were Sanskrit scholars <laughs> they used to get amazed when Prabhupada was speaking what language is saying yeah Amazing. Hari Bol, Hari Krishna. Ending up with Mahamantra. Thank you.